The Dunmer experience in Skyrim just got 100 times better thanks to Paul Charm Solus and his wonderful new collection of modded armors. Welcome to Fudge Muppet everyone, my name is Michael, and as a lover of everything Dunmer and all of the sci-fi fantasy tier aesthetics that they possess, I'm super pumped to introduce you to a new way to bring Morrowind to Skyrim. This is the Armors of the Velothi Part 2, a fresh mod that will allow you to build an aesthetic worthy of a true Dunmer character. In a previous video on the channel, I covered Armors of the Velothi Part 1, alongside a bunch of other incredible mods to specifically enhance your roleplaying experience as a Dark Elf, and that will be linked below. But right now, I want to show you the great work that the author has done at bringing the Morrowind feel into Skyrim with 9 new Dark Elf themed sets and 7 new weapons. These amazing armor sets have many different variations and come with various options to build things exactly how you want. There's hoods, goggles, different helmets, and more. First up, we have the Poster Child, the Indoral Bone Saint set, and I absolutely love it. It takes the traditional Indoral armor that gleamed gold on every Ordinator that guarded Temple Grounds, and changes it to reflect the way in which Dunma culture has evolved since the times of the Tribunal. The timeline has moved forward, and House Indoral has reverted to worship of the Reclamations. Its entire being has been entirely entwined with the Temple. To become a priest of the Temple is now considered to have joined in Daryl. A change makes sense, and to me this set perfectly reflects that by taking away the ostentatiousness of the old Ordinator armor, and instead using Bone Mold to emulate Narivar. It appears more Daedric inspired, the face a little more grim. I can imagine a Dark Elf growing up amongst the ruins of Mournhold, rising from the ashes, following the path of Narivar, championing Azura, donning the armor of a Bone Saint to take a holy pilgrimage to the great Azura statue built in Skyrim. At the end of the day, it really is just a beautiful fresh take on an Indoral character for a 4th era Tamriel. The banner, cloak and shield it comes with are also incredibly cool. The set can be found on an enemy at Refugee's Rest, right by the border of Eastmarch and Morrowind east of Windhelm. Next up we have the Redoran Hearthguard set, and in my opinion this is the perfect Redoran armor. I love the inscription carvings, and the red drapery reminds me of the skirted guards of Aldruin that you would find in The Elder Scrolls 3. This looks like an outfit you would see on Redoran Guards of Blacklight, the now capital of Morrowind, which thanks to Red Mountain's eruption would likely be just as exposed to ash storms as Aldruin once was. But what is really cool to me are some of the helmet variations. You have the more classic bone mold helmet shape with hood or without, but there are two other options. One is the unique Redoran Master Helm from Morrowind, and while it may look a touch impractical for visibility, I've always liked to imagine that it is for such masters that could win a sword fight with their eyes closed, proof they have honed their craft. Also, there is another helm with lots of drapery and wraps that I think would be the perfect fit for a Redoran character whose backstory is that he once patrolled the Velothi Mountains and hunted bandits. To go with this set, there is also a Hearthguard Sword and Hearthguard Guard greatsword. And by the way, remember there are always creative ways to use such armor for other non Dark Elf builds. Take our popular Sand Demon build, for example. Instead of using the typical Bone Mold set, use the Hearthguard set, but still with the red Alakir hood. To acquire this set, complete the Raven Rock questline, and to craft it yourself, it has the same requirements as vanilla Bone Mold. This mod collection also introduces Ashlander Warrior Armor, a heavy armor set made of chitin, and a brilliant alternative to the standard chitin armor for your Ashlander builds. You could take our own Ashlander build and perhaps create a heavy armor variation, but even better I think this would be ideal for an Ash Khan build. Ash Khan are the leaders of the Ashlander tribes, and I really like how this set in particular leans more into the Mongolian steppe people's inspirations for the Ashlanders, especially with the helmet tassel design. There are also some additional variations that are just right on the money for the Ashlander aesthetic. The set also comes with an Ashlander bow and arrows, so perhaps a heavy armored war archer is the ideal way to tackle an Ashlander theme for your next Skyrim playthrough. This set, along with the bow and arrows, is found on a corpse near Frostmoth Fortress and requires vanilla chitin level smithing to craft. Additionally, this collection adds a new set called the Ash Reader Armor, a heavy set made of bone mold over robes, and it looks amazing for a Dunma Sorcerer character, especially with the illuminated helm. The 
The symbols on the robes remind me of Telvanni, and perhaps this is an expansion on the ideas of Telvanni dust adepts who specialize in ash magic, and considering that this set is acquired in the Distant Memories quest, which sends you to discover the Telvanni heritage of Brand Shea in a shipwreck, well I'm gonna assume Telvanni. Imagine a sorcerer build who, like Neloth, has taken a great interest in the heartstones produced by Red Mountain, and uses Ash Guardians and Ash Spawn to assail his enemies, while he controls the battlefield with spells like Ash Shell. I think the build writes itself, honestly. This can be crafted with the same requirements as Vanilla Bone Mold. Next up, we have an armor set for a faction of Morrowind that usually doesn't get much love. Now, to be honest, that is understandable, since the Kamonatong are a xenophobic criminal organization full of thugs. However, if you're feeling like playing a bruiser, a hitman, or a crime boss character, then this could be exactly what you're looking for. Hell, with all the variations like the basket helm, the dust breather, the hood, the mask, and the dust caps, you could create a whole gang. I think the Dust Breather variant looks great on Muscle. Any big intimidating character, the Enforcer if you will, the Hood on any Hitman, the Dust Caps on the Grunts, the Basket Helm on the Silent Bodyguard, and one of my favourites is actually the Mask, which looks like it was inspired by the Samurai Menpo. It looks perfect for the crime boss, like I can imagine stories being told between citizens of the Rift, hoping that the Masked Man doesn't show up for their money. There's also a large two-handed club known as the Kamona Club, which can come in handy if you need to bludgeon fools who refuse to cooperate. Anyway, this just adds such great flavor and potential for a variety of new characters. Again, if you can make vanilla bone mold, you can craft this set. Next up, we have the armors of the more broadly familiar Tong, and that is the Morag Tong, the guild of assassins that brought the line of Riemann to an end. The Morag Tong Seeker set is now worn by their members in Ashfellow Citadel on Solstheim, and it is reminiscent of the iconic Morrowind concept art, and in my opinion, it's the peak Morag Tong aesthetic. The eye patch with multiple resin lenses, it just looks so good. And there is an additional helmet variant here, which fits seamlessly, perfect for any creepy assassin character, the kind that would unnerve their clients without saying a word. I really like that one for an alchemist assassin type, I even like to imagine that under the mask, he or she is grievously deformed from botched poison experiments. Just awesome stuff. The Seeker set also comes with a dagger and a sword. But that is not all. Once a standalone, the Morag Tong Grandmaster set has been included and refined. A heavy armor set that feels similar to heavy chitin armor from the base game, but much better, fitting for one who leads their order. Also, there is a Grandmaster sword, similar in design to an Egyptian Kopesh, and everyone loves a curved sword, don't they? To find these armor sets, well, you will either have to cleaver your way through the Morag Tong of Ashfellow Citadel on Solstheim, or you can craft them. Both have the same crafting requirements as Vanilla Chitin. This collection also adds a fairly neutral set, a less faction-related attire. The Traveling Merchant set is perfect for, you guessed it, a Dunma Merchant. But this attire could be used for a variety of characters, a smuggler, a traveler, an adventurer. And I'm in love with the Hanging Lantern. It's such a cool little addition. If you really aren't in the mood for an intense warrior mage or thief playthrough, and instead want to build out a home for yourself in Raven Rock and usher goods back and forth, or perhaps make Make your own to sell, this would be the outfit for you. This set can be purchased from a traveling merchant near the gates of Riften, and it is also craftable with the same requirements as Vanilla Chitin. And the final set here belongs to the most underrepresented of the old great houses, the Great House Dress. Or should I say, the once great house dress. This is the Salt Plain set found in Fallowstone Cave, all craftable with requirements of bone mold, and it looks beautiful. Distinct, clean, and a great representation of a great house that in the main games really only gets name dropped. House Stress once ruled the southern lands of mainland Morrowind, bordering Black Marsh, and were notorious for their enslavement of and animosity towards the Argonians. The Tamriel Rebuilt Project, which is one of our favorite modding projects ever, has been working since before Morrowind's release to expand the Elder Scrolls III from just Vardenfell to all over mainland Morrowind, and the project has some great concept art and lore created for House Stress. And this mod has taken inspiration from that project, and it's just so awesome to see these house dress designs in Skyrim.
Like the others, this set comes with a few variation pieces and has a few different helmet designs, and now for the first time I feel like I can truly make a house dress character without having to rely on default chitin or bone mold for a Dunma theme. I highly suggest you visit the Tamriel Rebuilt website and look at the lore they have planned for house dress, and I would use that as a source of inspiration for a backstory. It's also worth noting that house dress of all the great houses remained quite traditionalist and never eschewed the good Daedra completely and so the transition from the Tribunal era to the new Temple of the Reclamations would likely be relatively seamless. Keep that in mind for roleplaying. And that is the Armors of the Velothi Part 2, an amazing mod, amazing work by Paul Charm Solus, and combined with his Part 1, you'll have a bigger selection of exquisite high quality armors than ever before, providing an aesthetic for any Dunma roleplaying idea you likely have. Ashlanders, Kamona Tong, Morag Tong, Redoran, Klalu, Indoril, Telvani, Dress, all all of these factions now have armors to fit a variety of character ideas. Here at Fudge Muppet, this has stirred up concepts for a whole bunch of ideas that might become builds or even a playthrough. Let us know what you would like to see in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching, like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to Fudge Muppet, and hit the bell icon to get more Elder Scrolls content in your life. My name is Michael, and I look forward to nerding out with you again very soon.